Welcome to Curious Conversations with Tully and Sarah. We sit down and chat with business owners, entrepreneurs, and some of the best conversation starters. This is a podcast about real life lessons and people doing cool shit. This is a very special recording. Oh my heavens. Yeah. Yes. Nana and Pa, you're back for round two. Do you know you actually blew up my, um, on your phone, people can message you things on apps and I had so many messages about your episode and your wisdom. Oh, oh right. Yeah. It must be a rarity nowadays. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> loved it. It was such a great episode. I think it's so beautiful to hear from people that have, once well, you've obviously experienced our age, but also I feel like you've experienced so much more and probably more hardship than us. Yes. Oh, oh definitely. you don't know yeah. hardship. What no. do you mean by that? Well, I say you can still go to these concerts and pay seventy or eighty dollars a ticket. Yeah. God, we couldn't afford two dollars yeah. a ticket. Uh, yeah. But not that Nothing we ever like went that. Yeah. To, to any of those things. Until when though? I don't think we ever went to a concert. Um oh we went to a few uh, live shows. Oh yes, but Stage not, shows. not the big concert. Like the Oh one... no, no, they never had them. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They just didn't have them. One thing that um Sorry. I've mentioned to a lot of my friends that we've had a conversation about recently, Nan, and I don't know if you remember it. It was up at your house in the country. And I asked you, out of 10 of your girlfriends, how many do you think got to their deathbed? And one looked at their husband and were like, I've, I lived my life with you. And two looked back at their life and thought, God, I wished I lived it differently. Yeah. How many How many out of ten do you reckon? I remember your answer in my head. Oh, about seven. Yeah. Seven or eight. Yeah. I wish I'd have done my life differently till I met Pa. I was mm. just, because that was one of the questions, and I'll get it up, because I asked people what did they want to know, and <coughs> the question was, if you could do it all over again, if you could, would you do it all over again? Well, as far as having your mother, yeah. yes, but as far as being with that heaper, mm. no. Yeah, yeah. Because, and that's something often people ask me about you because I say, I think I get my strong willpower and independence and stubbornness from you, which yeah. is not a bad thing at all. Like you are very, mm. you're a very strong woman. Yeah. So you know that emotion where the lady's wearing that bandana and she's flexing yeah. you. That reminds me of you because oh. you always used to flex your bicep muscles at us. <laughs> Show us your muscles. She still does. Yeah. And you, you divorced in an age where it wasn't normal. Oh, it was and frowned on. Yeah. And you, even yeah, my mother. Still, still yeah. frowned on. Uh, but yeah, you can be. Uh, were you? Are you this strong woman because you're the baby in the family, or because you had to become? Well, I had to become uh, because um, you had to do so much more. You had mm. to be a mother. I had to be a nurse, a nurse for my and, father, mm. who was in the thing all the time. I had to go to work, and I, uh, Peggy, my sister, and I used to do all the housework. Because we thought my mum was old and she was 52. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. So going back, <coughs> many people mightn't have listened to the first episode. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had three brothers and two sisters. And your your pa was gassed at the war. That's why you had to nurse him. Yeah, he gassed at the first war. And, you, and this is all in the first episode with both of you. <laughs> and you dropped out of school when you were 14. Yeah, and I you walked at the place. Anyway. Yeah, that was common. You and that me was both pretty I common school amongst too. ordinary working people. Was it common? Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't very common to no, finish anybody, school. Anybody that went to high school yeah. was give up that next echelon of people. Wow. I didn't you know, know that. well to do or good public servants or a thing in that category there. Yeah. The ordinary working people just high school was out. Yeah. Why was that? Was that because it was just a thing to do or they couldn't afford it? No, couldn't we couldn't afford, afford it. Yeah. So My that's the way the society and the structure was set up. Okay. 
the same as university. Very, very rarely did anybody from the lower class ever get to university. And the, the, the only reason they, if one did get there, they'd pick him up that they were so brilliant. That, that, um, like a scholarship or something. Yeah, they yeah. go through on scholarships and a bit of finance yeah. by some woman. Or, or, or so we did not know that. When you were younger then, and obviously you could drop out at a young age, did you know what you were going to be? No, no. I always wanted no. to be a doctor. Yeah. Oh, wow. And we couldn't afford it. Yeah. But my elder sister, Barbara, my mum and dad sent her to business college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> she um, joined the WAFs when the war was on and mm. she was a, what do you call them, cipher. Yeah, Secret code, code oh, cipher. Oh, she connected all the codes and yes. all that. She was, yeah, that was a pretty classified yeah. 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 piece of um, information. So yeah. you, you, you never dreamt of mon monetary success or anything when you were younger? Oh, you always try and think, oh, I'd love to have a million pounds <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. or whatever it was at the time. Yeah. Yeah, but you never ever seen it. Yeah. But you never <laughs> thought it would make you happy? No. No, money doesn't make you happy. Be happy if you've got to yeah. pay, if you're renting, pay your rent, put three meals on the table mm -hmm. a day, mm. be happy with that. Yeah. And if you've got anything else, good luck. How do you think that's different these days? Because I feel like this, it's very materialistic. Well, the worst thing that's happened is credit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cheap credit. Yep. And it sucks so many young people in that they're locked into it. It's mm. true. They can't get out of it. Yeah. And it just... We never had credit or yeah. very little. There was a few odd money lenders that had come knocking on the door. Yeah. Um, like my mum. She had one there for many years. Mm -hmm. they only you had you couldn't go to the bank and want to borrow money when you had no assets, you had nothing. Yeah. Oh, you couldn't. And we was all in rented houses. Yeah. We didn't own any houses then. You you guys grew up quite poor. Yes, really, in real terms, yes. Yeah. It, it, what's real terms? Quite what's, poor. Like po what's poverty? Well, poverty. I don't. Well, do they we... come out of a, a bit of an era in the nineteen twenties, mm. and then bang, the depression came. Mm -hmm. Now, because the the money people wouldn't put money in to give it a big kick like they've done here in recent years. Mm. So everybody was out of work, mm -hmm. totally out of work, yeah. just about 90% of the population, and, and then they had to call, the go on relief. Sorry. Rollers, Rollers just playing with the phone. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what they call relief or the susso. Yeah. They did go and work for the state government or the government, like my father yeah. had to work on the railway, the little river, or go up to Shepparton and, and work mm. on orchards up there. Yeah. You know, they You did what you had to do to survive. Well they they would get virtually what we called a meal ticket. Yeah. yeah. So a meal ticket There's is no like money, coupons. no money. When did it start to change? Uh nineteen thirty eight. It started to become good again. Yeah, it's only because of war was pending and the big fellas knew it was and they were gearing up. They were getting a bit very frightened of Germany. Yeah. Do you think that we we will see a time like that again? Yes. Well, have a look at what you're seeing at the moment. It's 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 ten to a thousand times yeah. worse. What do you mean? Well, millions of people are being devastated, being killed. Mm. They're the not war. military targets. They're human targets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And innocent people. Yeah, innocent. Yeah. Every time they drop one of those weapons. And, of course, they've got the sophisticated yeah. armaments now. Mm. They can sit back and just press a button and say, well, guide that one over there and set that one there. Mm. You were talking before about how you would have done things differently, Cheryl. What would you have done? Anything personal that you would have done different? Lived life? What would you, what would you have done differently? Uh, well... I'd have probably stayed at school. I mean, mm -hmm. I was quite smart, mm. but um, I just hated the place. Yeah. I hated the teachers. Mm. And um, when I was uh, oh, nearly 14, I got diphtheria. I remember you oh, telling us about that. Yeah. yeah. 
And my dad said, if you're a good girl in hospital, we'll see if you can leave school. Yeah. Oh, right. And I was the best patient they'd ever had. <laughs> yeah. And then you went and worked on the weaving machines? I went to work. A lady down the road wanted holidays and she worked at Davies and Coops mm. in a canteen. Yeah. <coughs> she asked me would I go there for two weeks so she could have a holiday. So I said yes. Yeah. And I just love seeing the machines. Yeah. So I learned them, and and I couldn't leave because of the uh, war. Yeah. So um, I were was... your siblings working at this time? Were your si- were brothers and sisters working? Oh yeah, Peggy was um, uh, a f- learning to be a florist. Yeah. Oh, and, a florist. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Tubby. And um, you know, decorate flowers. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, Barbara, of course, was um, going to, in the WAFs, mm. going to work every day. I've got a question for both of you. You would say um, you've told me many times that never in your wildest dreams did you ever think that you would have this much money. Oh, no. Mm. No, I don't know. But, you sort of think I'd like to. Yeah. Well, when we but first... not have it. Because you do, but you're you're very frugal. Like yes. you're not spenders. No. no. Well, we learned the hard way. Yeah. If we got if we got a shilling in our pocket, we got something out of that shilling. Yeah. It wasn't wasted. Yeah. Pa retired when he was forty, didn't he? Now. Oh, I wasn't forty. <laughs> <laughs> I it was forty-five, wasn't 45, it? Forty-five. Oh, it was not. You, was, you used to go down to the yard and work on the machine, but you didn't go out. Yeah. Work. Well, I was organising machinery and. Uh, how do you? How does one? Because oh, I would like to know how does one retire at forty five, Pa? Well, no, they 50, save their 50, pennies. About fifty five, I semi retired. Yeah. Uh, having a good wife that used to go to work. But, we and then, married. then the other thing was, I I had some pretty good business contacts with working. Because I knew my job that well. Yeah. They were starting to come to me. But so, a bit for of people a listening, what did you do for work? Well, I was in the earth moving and yeah. drenching mm-hmm. and I worked a lot for the state governments Yep. on hire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, with engineers, I'd done quite a few jobs there that nobody else could do. Yeah. Uh, One of the smartest men I know still to this yeah, day. Yeah, you are very smart. But, of course, smart. that's gone now. What do you mean that's gone? Uh, well, the machinery and everything's changed. Okay. Mm. Got bigger and bigger and idiots operating machinery and God knows what. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why they still have bad accidents on sites. I've, got, shouldn't. I've got a never. question when it comes to work and career, and it was also another question that someone asked. I Not that I feel a pressure... I, maybe it is a pressure to succeed and expectations of the family to to be something and do something in this life. Did you ever do you ever feel that pressure from your family growing up to be someone and be successful? Oh, I reckon yes. You reckon no, you did? Your father, you went to um, school, but you you you. you used to pass with honours and everything. Oh, right. And his father should have kept him going. Mm. Yeah, well, he was battling in himself. And your it. poor mum used yeah, to well, fight yeah. your battles, not your dad. No, that's right. Oh, well, them days, of, they used to work six days a week, of course. Yeah. The six days a week was normal, but most of them would work a half, about a half an hour early, um, more every day and knock off around about 1 o'clock on a Saturday, so mm. they would go to the pub or that was their ritual. Mm-hmm. Come on, have a shave and go to the pub. And but the pubs used to close at what time? 6 o'clock. Did That's, they? Yeah. I did not six know o'clock. that. Yeah. I wish they closed at 6 o'clock now. <laughs> yeah. It'd solve a lot of problems. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what time did the men go start drinking if pubs closed at 6 p.m.? Because oh, they were well, early. That's in the th- if you go through. Well, they'd get there half a dozen bottles. What do you – oh, and take oh, home. And take take home. home or have a bit of a party somewhere. Yeah, yeah right. Interesting. So they get their grog that way. Yeah. And then when, when grog was a bit short, they used to get to like the four-gallon containers. Oh. And we 
they'd fill up a, a, oh, out a of the tap with the wow. beer. And they'd take home one of those oh. containers with a gallon really? of beer. How much was beer back then? Because it's expensive now, yeah. beer. Well, oh. It's always been expensive. Oh, has it? Okay. Well, well luxury. You know, in relation to uh, your, to wages. your wages. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think a shilling was a pot. So going back, you felt pressure to be something. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a battle. Mm. A mental battle. As, yeah, as well as a yeah. battle outside yeah. to mm. get into the right job. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever feel like that you were letting your parents down or anything? No. Oh, never. No. You just wanted to you just wanted to be successful to why? Why did you want to be successful in their eyes? Oh, well, I don't know, really. It was more self-conscious of what you wanted, not yeah. what they wanted. Yeah. yeah. Were I you never a- thought too much of a mother and father what they wanted. Yeah. Mm. They never put any expectations on you. No, 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 because the majority of people in, in our sort of s- section of society was all in the same boat. Yeah. I think you got pushed more when you met me because you, you went to, um, what was the night school you went to? Yeah, well, that was construction. Uh, Engineering. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. yeah, civil yeah. engineering. So it went to Not outside, outside of the maths. Yes, mm-hmm. to learn engineering. Yeah. But when we first married, I worked, and Pa worked, and we uh, used to bring our wages home and that would go on the table. Mm. That was the rent. Mm-hmm. That was the week. Yeah. A bit for you and a bit for me and anything over, we saved. Yeah. And this is the different mentality when it comes to money and finances you both grew up because i said to nana the other week i need to be more like you i I do too one in a mental strength but you're also also a risk taker you say just buy it just you know buy a house do that do that and nana was saying they they owned half a street in north carlton at one stage we could we could have used if we we could have Paid, uh, bought Amos Street. Yeah, yeah, in North Carlton. Yeah, imagine if Very, we still had that. So, we could all live there. So Nana, they owned what six properties in Amos Street Crazy. once. Uh, four. Four, and there was one for sale, and um, Pa didn't want to because he's. You've never borrowed money, is that correct? Yeah. Never borrowed money from a bank. Mm-hmm. So how? No, well, I couldn't. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give it to us. They, we Even never had assets worked. enough to cover. You couldn't borrow like you can now. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Now the banks, uh, if you couldn't come up with something yeah. substantial. So Nana wanted. Nana said to Pa, like, this house that was for, for sale, yeah. let's buy it, let's borrow whatever money and the rent from the other houses pay okay, for the other, yeah. other house. That's I said, right. And they wouldn't give it. I said to Nana, that's such forward thinking yeah. for back in that day. Very forward. What yeah. we need is, you see, if you've got parents that can, <laughs> that can stand by you and give you that little push, yeah. you're on the right track. Yeah. If you haven't got that to start off with, your uphill battle. Yeah. yeah. Because nobody wanted to lend you money. Who are you? You're nothing or you're only a shit kicker as a Santa goes. Yeah. See? It's so interesting. So my kick, my real kick was I in Holden Street, North Fitzroy. Mm-hmm. There was a row of four uh, tenements, weren't they? Yeah. Brick places. but And they were selling it on fender terms. Which was five year terms, you know, mm-hmm. pay three hundred pound deposit mm-hmm. and uh, pay at the end of five years, pay them the interest or whatever. And I thought, oh, well, I'll go and have a look at this. Mm-hmm. So I started an auction, and they only expected to get about fifteen hundred. Well, I I paid about two thousand eight hundred pounds. I only had three hundred pound in the bank. Oh, yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. So so that was a deposit on the house. So. The agent quickly snaffled the three hundred pound with the bank book. Yeah. And the owners were an elderly couple. They'd bought property during the depression, and and and, uh, and, uh, and there was this drunken retired copper was mm. living there. It was 25, 25 shillings a week, I think, mm. the rent. Yeah. 
So uh, I, I, was, I hadn't done anything to the property because I had to get him out. What year would have this been? That 1952. Wow. Yeah. I had to get him out. Well, I had a priority rating for getting them, getting them out. What's so I give what? him 12 months' notice and he had to go. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then when the 12 months' notice was up, he decided he had to go at any rate. But the original owners come to me and offered me a thousand pounds. Till for what? To sell it back to them. Oh. Well, this was the start of my money journey, I reckon. Yeah. And I, th I thought to myself, now what am I going to do about this? I could do it with a thousand pounds because I'd bought a lap of land at Forest Hill. Yeah. Uh, so I, I accepted it. So I took the thousand pound, and, and this helped buy the get a built place built in Forest Hill. Yeah, Just right. A cheap but yeah. that's when you married Phyllis. Yeah, yeah. That's Nan, uh, Pa's first wife. Okay. They both yeah. had for first marriages. This is a second marriage. Sit married for sixty years next year. Yes. Yes. Yep. Sixty years. Yeah, it's gone like it's up only yesterday. What the happy anniversary? Happy. An <laughs> yeah. What makes a successful marriage? Because that was one of the questions that was asked oh, like five that's, times. That's easy. You've got to accept. Treat one another as you would want to be treated. There's no difference. You're a human being, whether you're male or female. Mm. You've got to respect them. You have your arguments. That's, that's a par for the course. We're only having them now, not when we were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's things now are getting a bit frustrating when you're trying to do something. And yeah, you, yeah. Your poor old body hasn't got the capacity mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. does that does that get frustrating when you it, you're well, able to do something? Well, it does. Just now, she's worse than me, but yeah. I'm getting that way. But well, because he's he's deaf in the left ear oh, and no. he will not admit it. Yeah, and and he doesn't hear me at times. And I I say, oh, then the other day I said, I know why Claire drops that word. <laughs> But Don't my, worry, Sarah can't hear me in her ears either. Nana's never said fuck in her life. Oh, really? Never. No. And we said, we've offered her, I think Claire even offered you a thousand dollars. A thousand pounds. Yeah. Dollars <laughs> one day to say fuck. Trouble. And Nana was like, I will never, ever say that word mm. in my life. And you're 97 and you still haven't. No. But I think. But I think when Nan's going to be on you, your deathbed and you're going to be saying goodbye, you're going to she uh, might, you're going she to might usher utter over the, the grandchildren and you're going to be like, she might utter it. Fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, I never thought of that. Yes. That's a great yeah. way. Fuck you all. Yeah. Yes. You better keep that under your bottom. Yeah. Exactly. And oh. then and then she'll be like, give me my thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. A great idea. <laughs> no, but it's a and that's something that. I Tully's scared of getting old. Mm. Is oh, it no, no. It's no. just like you're still The main young. thing is oh, that's nice. you keep your body and your mind healthy. Yeah. How do you do that? That's, yeah. Well, it's diet, it's physical activity, whatever you do. Yeah. Uh, Having a purpose each day. You guys still don't, garden and Don't yeah. start yeah. worrying too much in your 30s. Yeah. Okay. So that's a bad age. Your 30s are why? Yes. Why? Uh, because you're trying to get on top of everything. Yes, mm. it's true. And sometimes you can't see your way clear mm -hmm. and it starts getting to you. And I decided about the mid oh, when I went to school, uh, just ease off a little bit. It works hard just the same, mm. but don't stop, start worrying too much. Yeah. Mm. That's great advice because I think – Oopsie daisy, this roller just took a tumble. I think 30s – feel a lot of pressure because you feel like you have to have everything together. Yes. Houses, family, yeah. husband, yeah, the house, yeah. money, financial, and yeah. it stresses me out. But that's yeah. great advice. you just advice. go along sensibly and, and that in, in that 10 years, yep. you should have a house paid off. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. Well, it's hard these. No, but whatever your goal yeah, is, yeah. that's the main so you're married. But some of them can't. Once that they can put their hand on Borrowing. Yeah. So 30, you your 30s aren't great. What are your 40s like? Well, they're getting better because then you start to see your way. You start being bloody conscious. and Yeah. Be careful because it's dumb. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we can edit. <laughs> nah, but it's, it's interesting. And Chris Judd last week said something that's really stuck with me. He said that 
when you're 41 years of age, that's the lowest point of your life. He's like, exactly. Do you agree with that? You, you're, the house, the money, what you think you should have been. If your parents start getting elderly, you have to look after them. But he said the good thing after 41, it's basically just linear until you get to about 75, 80, and that's when your body starts to change and you can't do as much. Now, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm 97 and I've been lugging mattresses, that's true. underlays, yeah. beds. Yeah. Yeah, with a broken back virtually. Yeah. I've got a... It's cursing and swearing and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> but not fuck. Not fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'll accept that word. Yeah. <laughs> so you... It, it just... What was the best age bracket for you guys? Mid-40s. Okay. Okay. Nana? Because oh, Pa was retired. Because financially we're yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah. We're Taking secured enough yeah. to see that we were all right when, when we... Got to retirement age, mm. get the pension or whatever, and had a little bit of money there. Owned your own home. That's your asset. That's the main thing. Owned yeah. your own home, that roof over your head. Yeah. As much as you stay here, Whether you should buy yourself a nice little place when they go down a bit yeah. more. And then you can rent it and let them pay for it. Yeah, it's true, and that's what I said to you. But my mindset is like so scarce where I'm like, I, I'm scared of my bank account going down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, you've just got to use your money sensibly yeah. what you've got. Yeah. Uh, property prices will start to go, well, they started now, mm. go down probably up to 10% in the middle of next year, I'd say. Yeah. So you don't get frustrated that you can't do as much as you – no, used don't to be. get frustrated. Just take a step backwards. We shouldn't. And and think what you're going to do. Are you going to do it that way or rush in and do it that way? Don't touch that. You'll make a bloody mistake. You might even get hurt. Don't sweat. Just take your time there and methodically go through it and do it. Do – so, again, you're not scared about getting old. Body's okay. Never. Too late. <laughs> But you say it goes in the blink of an eye, right? Oh, it does. Yep. Oh, does. yeah, by Jesus, it does. And you say it's all a mindset. You could be an old 97-year-old or you could be a young – you say, how old do you feel today, if I ask you? Because I ask you all the time, how old do you feel today? Well, take my back out of it. Mm. I, I only feel about 50. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Mentally, that's you've got the brain box yeah. still active. That's one good thing. Yeah. Most important. I've got a question. Obviously, anyone, God can take anyone at any time. But are you guys scared of death or dying? No. Ah. Not now. You die every would, would night. It would have been years ago. You would have been, Pa? Tell scared of death. No. Would have been years ago because you, you know you're building up and you're sailing along pretty well. Yeah. God, Jesus, we don't want to leave this behind. Or yeah. We haven't we haven't enjoyed it yet. Yeah. So of course you do. Yeah. What about grief? I'm also terrified of my parents leaving. Oh. I don't know how oh, to deal with grief. That's it's that's terrible. an emotion, emotional thing that depend on how close you were to them. Is that the hardest thing you probably experience it is in your lifetime? Hard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but then with but me, when Peggy died on at your... 47, mm. we yeah, were only was... sisters. We were friends. Mm. Yeah. You yeah, know? you were good mates. How do you deal with that? How do, How do you deal with Well, that? you just got a copper tweet and mm. she had cancer that I'd say, well, at least she's not suffering now. Mm. That's true. You know? That's the a same positive. with Valerie. I mm -hmm. miss Valerie a lot. Yeah. You know? Cause that was a nice... She, yeah, yeah, she yeah. was brought up with us. Yeah, you know. So you're not scared of dying. No, like no. I say, no. Claire, uh, Sarah, you die every night when you go to sleep. That's yeah. true. That's it. But tell, tell what you what you do every night before you go to sleep. I say my prayers. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I say my prayers every night. And I I bless everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Do you think that's a secret to life? Is gratitude. No, like your mother says to me, but you don't believe in God. And I say, well, 
that there's nobody there, let's face it. Yeah. But you've uh, still say your prayers because you went to church all your life yeah. when you were little. Yeah. You know. I uh, think you believe in something. I, you, I suppose you believe there's, there's something, something there. Yeah. I well, do. Pa- I don't know what. Nana, no, that's right. Yeah. Nana, you've had an experience when your father's appeared to you. So you, I guess you know that maybe when you die that this isn't the end. Well, uh, it's only that I say, you know, I have not for many, many years, but I have seen my father and my mother, mm. you know, they come to the room or something, but I haven't seen them for many years because all my dad said to me was when he came, you'll be all right, pet. Mm. You know, that's all he said. But... Uh, because I think a lot of people our age, and it makes sense of what you were saying, Pa, that you're scared of dying because I think we're, we're at that age where, like, so many good things are still to happen in our lives yeah, probably. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And even at 97, you guys still have such an active social life that you still have so many good mm. things ahead. But I... I um. I just don't want to leave all you kids and, yeah. and mm. uh, like Erin and uh, Richie. Richie, they asked us to this party. Mm. Now, you don't have to have a couple of old fuddy duddies at the 21st birthday. Yeah. And I, I didn't hear properly what Erin said, but she mentioned me and her. Well, you were the only one that couldn't have mentioned, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, you know... And everybody, well, Christmas time, you know, mm. we st- still all celebrate together. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And we just celebrated <laughs> Mum's birthday together. Yes. Do you yeah. think um, Do you think our society doesn't respect elders as much as... No. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. No. Why, why do you think that is? Like, because they're too greedy. They yes. want too much. Yeah. And they're not prepared to give. You guys have so much wisdom, though. Like, And I say to oh. tell all the time, like, it's so important yep. to spend time with your parents, your grandparents. And it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. you've had more than grand. My grandparents, I didn't have very little to do with them. One grandfather died seven years before I was born. Mm. The other one died when I was four-year-old. That's mm. the two men. Yeah. Um. My father's mother, well, she died at 86, but I hadn't, we, we never had a great amount to do with her. And uh, my other grandmother, she lived with us for about 12, 14 years. Yeah. Before she died. She was 86. Well, that's the one thing I say to either of you. I'm like, if one one something happens to either of you, I was like, got plenty of spare rooms here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's like Claire at the moment looking for a bigger place and we can build a granny's flat there, oh. you know. <laughs> but isn't it nice to know that you're wanted? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. it is a nice feeling. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I wouldn't live with anybody. And yeah. Why? Well, because you'd be considering me all the time. Yeah. You'd be saying... You know, I've been invited out here tonight, but what will I do with Nana? Mm. You know, but you don't I, want to be a burden. I remember you stayed here last year. Um, pa was in the hospital, and you stayed here. And I think I still went out and did my thing, and like, oh yeah, just made sure you were all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it was great. You said it was like a hotel, and <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> five star review. I was like, great. What are some of the questions? Okay, some of the questions for Nan and Pa. We've hit a couple of them. One of them was the expectations from parents. Did you ever have that? Um, one was if you could do it all again. We've answered that. Yeah. What's the one lesson you would teach Sarah about life? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, like I say, yeah. you're not married but don't settle for second best. Just have somebody that's kind and good and that, you know, or stay single. Yeah. 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 But um, 
I think you're doing very well, Sarah. Thank you, Nan. Yes. Yeah. You know, working, Don't. saving your money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, still being good to people. Yeah. I just try and be a good human, that's it. A good, that's it. Yeah. 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 Don't worry too much and if it's getting on top of you, just take a step back and say, listen. Ask for help. Right now. Yeah, yeah. So even how do you... if you've got to ask for help, but yeah. normally you can do it yourself if yeah. you're yeah. really strong-willed. Or oh, I just yell at Tully. That helps it. <laughs> yeah, well, anything. <laughs> I, th- I did it that I, – I yelled at Tully the other day, Nan. <laughs> she didn't yell. You didn't yell. I just was like – She was angry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> how often do you express gratitude for each other? Oh, uh, about once a day, I suppose, when we go to bed. You say, yeah. I love you? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I give you some kisses. Oh, yeah. 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 And, mate, you would make breakfast and lunches for each other and I'm sure if Nan, because Nan still does your washing, you might say thank you for doing it. Yeah, she still does the washing. Yeah. I, used to, I used to do the washing early in the place. Yeah. When I used no, to go When to you work. were going to work. Yeah. 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 But you, every day you tell each other you love each other and you're thankful. Yeah. Well, we don't say we're thankful. And we just say, I say good night, you know, yeah. love you, and he says good night, love, or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. cute. But. Um, we might touch hands. Oh, yes. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nana always reaches out to. They used, you're in single beds now, but in the same room. Yeah. yeah. But well, it's only single beds because. Past started getting bad. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's only a recent thing. But when they were still in the same bed, um, Nan used to always just want to be able to touch Pa. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> if you, oh no, we've read that. If you could do it, what is your one agreed upon non-negotiable? And I think I know what this is. Well, they both have to agree on it. Yeah, or it's separate. I think I know what it is. Can so, I answer this for you? What's your non-negotiable when it comes you to your past? That. that you never go to bed angry with each other. Oh, no. Oh, that's a good no, one. Well, that's, no. If you've had a, a proper argument, not that we ever did, yeah. and that's honest, uh, never, get, never go to bed without saying sorry. That's mm. a good one. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Even during the day, if you have a, a bit of an argument. Yep. Five minutes later, come back and say, oh, we'll have a cup of tea now. Yeah, that's like us. We yeah. Do that. yeah. Right? That just wipes the slate and away you go again. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good That's good advice. We yeah. already asked what makes a su- successful marriage, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. yeah. This is one, and that's not from me and it's not from another Pacini child. Who's their favourite grandchild? Roll up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have... Uh, Nana loves her boys. No, uh, I love them all the same. Yeah. Yeah. I've got enough you, love the, It's for a funny all. thing because, say, with Nicholas, mm. we had a lot of Nicholas as a, as a kid mm. until he, you know. Oh, we had Nicholas so, a lot. So, yeah, we're more touch, attached oh, in lots of ways to Nicholas to Mark or to you yeah. in lots of ways. Yeah. Because we had him and he was all his crazy bloody antics and not going to school and yeah. they'd <laughs> ring up and say, Pa, if you won't go to school, can you take him? And, uh, so he's ready. your favourite because you spent the most time with him. You just justified why he's the favourite. <laughs> and so I'd take him, but he wouldn't go to bloody school. Yeah. That was at Werribee, of course. So he's your favourite because you spent the most time with him. I wouldn't call him the favourite, but that's how it sort of pans out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the time. I get the it. Time. Who looks after you now, though? You oh, get, yeah. Get, the baby of the family. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is a great question. If you could give your 30 year old self one piece of advice to live a ha- happy and healthy life, what would it be? Oh, God. 30 years old. When Nana, at 30 years old, where were you in life? Oh, I don't mention my 30s. 30. I was left Norm. Yeah. And uh, I was home living with my mother. 
And, of course, I had Barbara. So you were a single mum? Yes. And I had yeah. to go to work mm. and uh, just got nothing out of him. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yes, just just be very choosy what you marry. It's actually very good advice. Yeah. And there's no need to rush that's it. Why, uh, that's why your advice, I think, is don't settle. Because if you settle, you never know what you're going to end up with. Oh, no. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Pa, what, what advice would you give your 30-year-old self? Because you, um, your first marriage, she had an affair. Well, she, <laughs> she, was, she was man crazy. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny how after all these years how you can analyse things yeah. and see where the little mistakes and things that happened, you know. Uh, oh, she was a funny girl. She used to go to the same dance I went to. The Troc. At the Mer- no, oh. the Merry it- Sunday nights. But she was married to Pa. Well, uh, I don't know if she was or not then. No. No. No, I never went to the Trocadero with her. No, no Mary with her. Mary, the Mary no, never, I never went oh, to the no, Mary. No, she was only there with her sister. Yeah. Yeah. But I um, only went to the Palais Royal and uh, our ladies a, f- a few times. Oh, the truck we did Saturday night, I went there a few times, me and the boys, two mates or three mates. So what advice would you give your 30-year-old self? Uh, Don't marry a uh, floozy. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Uh, you've got to be strong-willed if you've got these flutes on the side. Oh. Uh, don't go in that. Don't open that bloody door. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Because I have roller now, what would be your best advice for me to teach her in this generation? Oh, none thinks this generation's cooked. You think your great-grandchildren... That you think they rule the roost and it's wrong. Well, don't let her run you. Yeah. You run her. Like I say to Ashley and yeah, Mark, yeah. you're the mother, mm-hmm. she's the child. Mm, great you're advice. the teacher. Yeah. Yeah. But they... You've uh, got... Too many today don't educate their children. Streetwise. Yeah. Right? They're not yeah. streetwise. No. Yeah. The parent You've has to, to set the boundaries. Because you're teaching them how to control themselves when they get older. Mm-hmm. It's not now, it's then. Yeah. When That's you're so not true. around, they've got to know how to how to get a situation and get out of it. That's mm. very or true. Or deal with it. That's really good advice. Well, I'm sure there's going to be a round three, so be prepared. Oh. <laughs> We'll have to start thinking a lot more. <laughs> well, they want everyone wants your wisdom. Yeah. yeah. But don't they listen to their nanas and past? Well, but I didn't have grandparents growing up. That's why na- she always says you're like her nan. So my dad's parents died when he was three and my mum's – I met my grandma. She died when I was 11. Mum's dad died when she was little, so I didn't have grandparents growing up. Mm. I don't have anyone to ask. My dad's a little bit older. I can ask him questions, but it's still not the same. Mm. No. I I, yeah. I never knew my grandparents. Mm. Yeah. They died. Mum's parents died just before I was born, mm. and Dad's was, of course, in England. Oh, yeah. So we never got to see them. Yeah. yeah. You no. Know? But... Um, you're very wise and you've experienced this, had many experiences which gives you many lessons. Oh, that's right. Yes. I can't wait to show Roller this video one day. You'll be like, <laughs> there's old Nanny Sheil. Yeah. Hi. God. Hello. Well, I love you both very, very much. And we love you, Sarah. Yes. Thanks for coming on. That's all right. Thank you. And we'll see you again. We'll give you a bit of a documentary of what what we did in our lives. Yeah, I would love that because... I'll I'll tell you from when I was about 12. That would be amazing. That would be great. 